Let's solve this question. This is about Lee who is planning a trip and he has estimates about the total length of the trip and about the total time that it will take, the driving time. So we will read both of these estimates for him. First is about the distance rounded to the nearest 5 kilometers. The length of the trip will be 560 meters. Second is about the time, let's highlight that here, rounded to the nearest one fourth of an hour. Driving time will be 7 hours. Now based on these estimates it says if these estimates are correct, then his average driving speed during the trip will be between x kilometers per hour and y kilometers per hour. And because x is less than y, we just have to put the smaller value here, the lower limit and the upper limit here. So we really have to see how we get average speed. You know, average speed is simply equal to the total distance divided by the total time. And right now, I don't exactly know what the distance is and what the time is. Why? Because these are the rounded values. So essentially, I will try to get the range of the actual distances and range of the actual time, the driving time that it could be. That is what will give me more idea about what all the average speed can be. So you see how average speed also is in a range. That range will come once I understand the range of distance and the range of time. So this requires your conceptual understanding of of rounding. Let's only work on distance first. So it said after you round your distance to the nearest 5 kilometer, then you get 560. So understand this very carefully. We have 560 as a rounded value. What is it that distance actually could have been so that rounding to the nearest 5 kilometers got us here? First of all, we need to be very clear about nearest 5 kilometers means what? It means to the nearest multiple of 5 nearest multiple of 5 means, you know, 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 15 and so on. So if I talk about the multiples of 5 in this interval, in this range, I know the next one is 565. The one before 560 is 555 and 560 itself is a multiple of 5. Essentially, you are talking about all distances for which the nearest multiple of 5 is 560 only. So let's try to find what those distances will be for which 560 will be the nearest multiple of 5. Think about it. If I go exactly here in the middle, this value is 557.5. If I am on the left of this, then my nearest multiple of 5 is 555. But if I am here in this region, then my nearest multiple is 560. And because of the rules of rounding, the moment you touch a 0.5, you always are rounded up. Essentially, this means that if my distance is in this red interval, then it will be rounded up to 560. This is about rounded up. Similarly, I'll think about this side. Now again, look at the exact midpoint of 560 and 565. You are here at 562.5. Now, if I am in this region on the right, then I will be rounded up to 565. But if I am here in this region on the left, then the nearest multiple of 5 is 560 as you want. Again, you have to think whether or not to include the 562.5. Think about it again. This, the 0.5 will make it round up to 565. So this is something I will not include. I'm keeping an open ball here. This, therefore, is the range of all possible distances that he could have traveled. So I'm going to put it like this, 557.5 less than equal to the distance, strictly less than 562.5. There you have your first relationship, everything about distance. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now let's get back to the question at hand. Now, similarly, we will try to find this range of time. So again, focus on the same idea. Time is rounded off, how? To the nearest one fourth of an hour. So for me, it means nearest multiple of one fourth of an hour. What is one fourth of an hour? First of all, that's, that's just 15 minutes. So if I'm talking about the nearest multiple of 15 minutes, then it's going to be seven and seven hours, 15 minutes and six hours, 45 minutes and so on. So if I try to see that possibility here, just look, I know that my 
my final rounded value is 7 hours. But if I really try to see where the 15, 15 multiples are, then the next will be here 7 hours, 15 minutes. The one before this will be 6 hours, 45 minutes. And of course, 7 hours is here, our rounded value. Now I know that the actual time is something for which rounding off takes me to 7 hours as the nearest multiple of 15 minutes. It does not take me here. It does not take me here. Again, you'll think about it the exact same way. Look at what you have in the middle and then this is the range of time which will bring you to 7 hours after rounding off. So what are these now? Think about this. This is a total of 15 minutes. So the half point will be 7.5 minutes, which means this is 6 hours and you increase 7.5 from 45. So 15 52.5 minutes. This side, if I see, this is 7 hours and you reduce 7.5 minutes. So that's 7 hours and 7.5 minutes. Now then, I just have to think about which one is included, which one is not, and the same logic works as in the previous question. And so I have my range of time as well, greater than or equal to 6 hours and 52.5 minutes, but less than 7 hours and 7.5 minutes. Now, if this double unit thing is confusing, we can convert it all into hours or all into minutes, but we'll see first what is it that we need to do. So here is your second range as well. Now, your information further on, it talks about average speed and it has a range X and Y. Probably this is what the question is. Let's just go and see. It says from the values given in the table, and I do see headers X and Y, select for X and Y the values that complete the statement in a way that the complete which statement again? It's it's this statement which has blanks right now. You want to complete this statement which X, with X and Y such that the selected values, the X and Y that you select here, they do include all possible average speed and y minus x is minimal. Okay, so see the first si situation, everything that we've read till now, we know that the average speeds, all of the average speeds lie between x and y. I don't know as yet whether x itself is the minimum possible speed and y itself is the maximum possible speed. All we know is that all of the average speeds with its minimum and with its maximum definitely does lie between x and y. That is the structure. Now in this particular question, it is saying you want to find x and y in a way that first of all, the rate range between x and y does include all of the average speeds, which it will because of everything that we've understood till here, and that y minus x is minimal, which means this gap that you want, you want this to be the minimal possible gap. You don't want x and y to be really, really far. So essentially, you're trying to create an interval which will contain all of the average speeds and the gap between them is minimal. Now, obviously, the least possible gap would be if x itself is the minimum speed and y itself is the maximum speed. But we are not sure whether that is what they've given because I see all of these here are integer results. So let's just see and find the minimum maximum speeds first. And then we'll see whether x, y are these values themselves or x and y will have to be wider. They have to be outside the range of average speed. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Let's see. So using the range of distance and the range of time, we will have to find the range of average speed. And when I see my units, it's kilometers per hour. So I do have distance in kilometers all right, but my time is right now in hours and minutes. So I'll just convert all of this into hours first. So here my conversion is done. I simply converted minutes into hours by dividing by 60. That's again something you will do on your calculator. You don't have to worry about this. Now, think about how average speed is calculated. You know this formula. So if I want to find the minimum possible value of this fraction, so minimum average speed for the fraction, I will then minimize the numerator 
and maximize the denominator. So minimum distance, maximum time. I'll just put it this way. Minimum D, maximum T. Now it's very simple. I just have to go into my intervals and get it. So this is my D. Where is the minimum D? It's right here, 557.5. Let's take that. And maximum t, I'll get that from the interval for time. This is your maximum t. Again, this is something which you cannot really touch. So it's something very, very close to this, but slightly less. So I am taking 7.125. But I will remember that the actual value is very, very close, but slightly small. Now, when you again put this on your calculator, you do the division, you are going to get 78.245 something. So I'm just going to take that as 78.25. So it's going to be a value very, very close to this. Now, similarly, I'll think about the maximum average speed and same logic you will use it's again a fraction that you're trying to work on so when is it that a fraction is maximum that happens when your numerator is maximum which means max d but your denominator is the least possible so again we'll go into the ranges maximum d is this upper limit so 562.5 and your minimum time is the lower limit of time which is here at 6.875 again this time also this minimum distance is actually slightly less than this why because I have a strict inequality here. Still, when I do this division directly by using these numbers, I will get an answer which is really close to these anyway. And what is this? This comes out to be very close to 81.82. So I'm going to keep this here. Now then, I have my minimum possible speed and my maximum possible speed. I'll take these values to the final statement and see how that is to be filled. Look what you wanted. You wanted to choose X and Y in a way that it does include all of the speeds here. It did not say that X itself is the minimum possible speed and Y itself is the maximum possible speed because it said the average speeds will be between these values. That means I here have the exact minimum possible and the maximum possible speeds, but the choices here when I see these are all integer values. So I have to choose a slightly wider range to ensure that all of these values here are really included. So focus on this part here. Let's see this with the choices. When you look at it, what is the range? What is the X and the Y that you can use to guarantee that all of your speeds here in blue, all of these speeds are really included. So first of all, for 78.25, you have to go wider. You can't go to 79. So if I have have it at 78. I'm sure that all of these speeds will be included. See, I could actually take 77 also, 78 also, 79 also. But my goal is to have the minimum gap between X and Y, remember, because of which I will not go beyond 78. I will not go farther on the left just to ensure that the blue range is included because it's already included now. Similarly, for Y also, you will go to the minimum possible value, which is greater than 81, and that is 82. And that helps us select our two values, 78. Okay, we don't have 78 here because we have to choose whatever the table gives us. So at least the greatest value, I do see 82 for Y. But for X, then I will have to go further on the left of 78. Do I have a 77? I don't have 77 also, which means I have to take the next best bet I have, 76. Very, very interesting question. Actually, if they asked you to find what X and Y could be, I would have selected 78 and 82. But anyway, we had these choices to select it from. So despite all of our analysis and understanding, ultimately, we also had to look at the choices to finally mark our answer. We were not free to just go anywhere and find it. Very interesting question. Let's summarize this nicely. We had this clean situation. We visualized everything about distance and time. Using our conceptual knowledge of how rounding works, we created this range for D and this range for T. From these two ranges, we found the range for average speed as well, where we used our conceptual knowledge of how we made minimize and maximize a fraction. Once we got this, we really got the minimum possible speed and the maximum possible speed. We simply had to see what X and Y values could we take from here so that we were sure to include all of the speeds in it. That's what it said. The interval between these values should include all possible speeds. Now for this, we had to go beyond the blue region. So your X had to be smaller than 78.25. Y had to be greater than 81.82. Now, although they said y minus x is minimal, it didn't really mean here that it has to be the minimal possible ever because that would have been with x78 and y82. You had to choose based on these choices, where is it that you can get it at the least value. So while we did have 82 as the closest number greater than 81.82, we did not have 78. So we had to go to the next best that we had, 77, because that was also not there. The next best, 76, which really was in the table, gave us our final answer. Really, really powerful question. Visual 
visualization, very important skill. Inference, very important skill. How is it that I'm deciding where X and Y will be? And then finding your final answer from the choices.